Hello friends, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to the How to Make Drum Cover series. If you missed the previous video, video number one, it is all about the gear that you need to begin making covers. So if you missed that, be sure to go check that out first and then come back to this video. So assuming that you have all the gear you need to start making videos, in today's video, we are going to actually record a video in real time that I am going to be using and posting on all of my social media channels. So we're gonna be filming In Too Deep by Sum41 today as a short because I wanna make sure that I can go into a lot of detail and give you guys a very structured step-by-step -step process so doing a short is gonna make that a little bit easier for me. So before we get started, please keep in mind that this is my own personal setup and step-by-step -step process. This may look different for everyone. There may be some things that work out differently or better for you, which is totally fine and completely expected. This is just the regimen that I use that makes filming videos the easiest and most enjoyable process for me. So to start this video off today, I'm going to be letting you guys know everything that I'm gonna be using. So for video, we're gonna be using a GoPro Hero 9. For audio, we're gonna be using the Yamaha EAD-10. Make sure you stick around for video number three, which is gonna wrap up the series because in that video, I'm gonna go over my full settings for the EAD-10. For lighting, I'm gonna be using two little spotlights that I got off of Amazon. And finally, to record the audio, I'm gonna be using my MacBook Pro and I'm gonna be recording into GarageBand. So the very first thing I do is get the aesthetic right in the room. I turn on my neon lights and I set them to fit the tone of the song. So I usually set the color of the lights to the genre of music that I'm playing or what color I feel the song would be. Then, after I get all my lights on and get the color set, I set up my GoPro. I have a moving track that I absolutely love. It gives the video more of a cinematic vibe. The link is in my bio if you're interested in that. And now for camera placement. I typically alternate between a front angle and a side angle. Sometimes I also film both and then cut between takes, but today we're just going to do the side angle. For social media, it's good to try and keep the visuals fresh and new every so often, so I really like to mix up the angles. I prefer setting up so you can see the whole kit from the front and from the side so my feet also get in the shot, but that's personal preference. Feel free to play around with the camera angles, it's one of the fun aspects about making videos. So after the GoPro is all set up and on the track, the next thing I do is get the song ready. So with the EAD-10, I plug the USB into my computer and open up GarageBand. I set the EAD-10 as the audio source and create two tracks. I prefer this over combining them because it gives you a little bit of play on the volume of the drums and the cymbals. I will show you guys more of this in the next video. I find the song that I wanna play on YouTube in high quality and then convert it to an MP3 and there are many ways to do this online and then I drag the song into GarageBand. I typically wait to remove the drums until editing, which I will also be showing you how to do this in the next video, because honestly, I rarely record to a click track. The drums in the song is what I reference as a click. That method is obviously not going to work for everyone, so if you wanna play to a click, absolutely please do it. It's probably the better way anyways. <laughs> All right, so we're almost ready to record. The last thing I do is get the lights on and set up right. What I found works best for maximum camera quality with the GoPro specifically is having the light illuminate behind the lens. So I always set one up in front of the kit and on the side of the kit. That way, wherever the camera is, you're getting the maximum quality from the camera and then also a little bit more illumination from whatever angle you're hitting on the camera. All right, so we are all set up and ready to go. So how this process works when you are filming is you're gonna wanna go ahead and hit record on your camera and your audio at the same time. That way the video and the audio are in sync with each other. When you get done filming a take and it's a good take and you're happy with it, go ahead and shut off your camera and go ahead and stop recording on your computer so you can save the audio in a sequence. That way you know which video take goes with which audio take because if you don't save them in sequence, 
it can be a royal pain in the butt to try and figure out what goes with what. Been there, done that so many times. Trust me, it's not worth it. So make sure that you are saving everything in the specific order that you're recording. So I typically like to record three solid takes. That way I have the best one to choose from um, because there's always gonna be one that's a little bit better than the others. So now let's get to the fun stuff and let's go film this video. All right, so I just reviewed everything. I think we got it with the third take. So now let's jump over to the computer and I will show you guys how everything looks once it's all recorded. So here is what the EAD10 looks like in the computer once everything's recorded. We're all good there. Everything's nice and lined up. So as I mentioned, this is the third take. We wanna make sure that we're saving everything individually, that way we don't overwrite anything. And I also made sure to double check the GoPro to make sure that everything's saved correctly on there. So make sure you double check your camera as well. All right, my friends, that just about wraps up this video. That was super fun. I was actually a little bit nervous about how I was gonna film myself filming a video, and it was a little bit complicated, but I think we got everything, and hopefully this helps you guys out. So there is still one final step in making drum covers, and that is going to be editing. So make sure you stick around for video number three in the How to Make Drum Cover series because we are going to edit the video that we filmed today. I will be walking you guys through every step with the software that I use, explain how to sync up the audio and the video, how to create a drumless track, and also go over my EAD10 settings with you guys. So if you have an EAD10 and you're struggling to get a nice crisp sound from it, Hopefully that will be helpful for you guys as well to get the best sounding audio out of your EAD10 that you can. So be sure to stick around and I will see you guys very soon with the final video in the How to Make Drum Cover series. Take care.